Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online service. We are a church in Irving, Texas who believe in the Word of God, the will of God, and the power of God. Our prayer is that something is said to enlighten you, empower you, and inspire you throughout your walk with the Lord. May God bless you abundantly. You gather outside the church. When you are going to survive, God has to step in your situation. my eyes into the hills from which come my help. I believe, brothers and sisters, that with this text today, we see God inviting you back. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us without falling before his throne. All right, good morning to everyone. Good morning to those who are in the sanctuary of the Lord. And good morning to those who are watching us live on, on Zoom. We welcome you to our 8 a.m. worship service. We're going to ask you to stand with us for the reading of God's Word, which is found in the book of Psalms, Psalms number 34. This second Sunday in the month of January, we want to begin with verse number 1. And I'm reading out the New King James Version. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Happy times, sad times, melodious times, inconvenient times, convenient times. I will work, I will bless the Lord. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I've read the first three verses of Psalms 34. We pray that you may govern yourselves according to the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this blessed day, this blessed Sunday, Father, one that we do not take for granted. We acknowledge, Father, that it's because of you that we live, we move, and we have our very being. So, Lord, we say thank you today. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to assemble ourselves in your house to worship your holy name. So, Father, we come together as a congregation of believers and disciples to exalt your name and that your praise shall continuously be in our mouth. So, bless this service, Father God, that it might be one in which we will lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, that the word will fall on good ground today and produce a harvest for your glory. It's in Jesus Jesus name we do pray and every saint said amen amen and amen you may be seated amen come on give God some praise today amen we're gonna go back just a little bit where you grew up in your hometown and I grew up in Oak Cliff, but wherever you grew up, uh, that's where this song is, is pretty familiar with you. So I ask you to sing with us this morning, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Time is filled with swift transition. Lord on earth on and Oh, be Turn, hold to God, change your hand. Oh, everybody ought to hold to it. God's hand. God's unchanging hand. His hand. God's unchanging hand. God's unchanging hand. Feel your hope. Feel your hopes on things eternal. leave you whatsoever things may bring if our earthly friends for 
forsaken, still more closely to him clean. Come on, everybody say it. Hold, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. story or the things that I've been through you can't feel my pain or what I had to go through to get here you'll never understand my praise don't try to figure it out because my worship, my worship is for real. Oh, because my worship, my worship is for real. You don't know my story. Don't know my story. Or the things that I've been through. Or the things I've been through. You can't feel my pain. You can't feel my pain. Or what I had to go through to get here. Yes. You'll never understand my praise. You'll never understand my praise. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to figure it out. Because my worship. My worship. My worship, my worship is for real. Yes, it's for oh, real. Because my worship, my worship, my worship is, my worship. is for real. Mm. I've been through too much. Mm. Not to worship him. Yes, I'm going to worship him. I Anybody going to worship him? Much. Yes. Not to worship him. Yes, Can Lord, I right worship here? you. I've been through too much. Mm. Oh, not to worship him. I come to worship him. I've been through too much. Mm, I've been through the fire I, to worship him. I come to worship him. Somebody say hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. My worship is for real. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. My worship is for real. Lord, I thank you. 
Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Say hallelujah. My worship is my worship. for real. Oh, because my, my worship, my worship is for real. All right, for real, for real, for real. My worship is for real. Amen. Yeah. We come to worship him. Amen. Well, we thank God for allowing us to see another Sunday. Amen. The second Sunday in the month of January in the year 2022. We have, uh, we're going to ask the video room to queue up the video announcements uh, and we're going to ask you to govern yourselves accordingly. And I'll, I will, uh, let me know when you're ready because I can make some announcements beforehand. But let me make a couple announcements that are not necessarily uh, uh, given to the team. You know, this, uh, the early part of January, I've seen a number of people that I have known and know who have lost loved ones. And uh, we've been hit, uh, and you've been hit with, with unexpected death. Yes. Some that you love as a son, some you love as a daughter, some you love as a, as a best friend. Sister Carolyn Leon, one of our faithful members here, her funeral will be this coming Saturday, uh, January the 15th. It's going to be at Golden Gate Funeral Home. It's going to be at 1 p.m., okay? And so I'm going to ask you to keep the Leon family uh, in, your, in your prayers. I also have a, uh, a funeral that I'll be doing the eulogy which will be Friday. So I have a funeral to eulogize on Friday, one on Saturday, and then one to attend on Sunday. And it's, it, it's, it's a reminder to all of us that life is precious. Yeah. And not to be taken for granted. Brother uh, Deacon Raphael informed me just this week that he lost a young man who was a a uh, former basketball player, student not too far from where he used to live that they took into their home and, and he died unexpectedly. Uh, and so I'm going to ask you to keep that family. I believe it's the last name is Barnes. Uh, keep that family in your prayers. And I know that it has to be a, a heavy burden on the mother as well as the, as the Washington family. And so keep them in prayer. Uh, keep Sister Deborah Higgs in prayer. Keep um, who uh, had to funeralize two cousins. Keep uh, Peyton and Horace Arkadi in your prayers. Keep Sister Shirley Donald in your prayers. Keep Brother Larry English in your prayers. And all of those I've named have lost loved ones. Keep them in your prayers. Keep Sister Ann Michael in your prayers, who's recovering. And then Sister Felicia Talbert just informed us just this week that she lost a brother. Um, and we're going to ask you to keep um, Felicia and her family in prayers. And then there are others who have been sick. You may not can tell by my, 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 uh, my voice, but I've been sick all week. I went and got a COVID test. 
early in the week because I had been sniffling and, and that's the same symptoms I had when I had COVID. So I decided I'm not going to take a chance. I went in and got tested and, right. and God bless you, it came back negative. Amen. And, but I was in the bed uh, and I had, uh, I said, well, if, if, I can, if I'm not getting into bed, I need to call Clint Sutton and put him on alert that he may have to preach both services. And then I get a text from Clint Lanita saying, he not feeling well, and, and so he can't preach the service. He thought he is going to preach. So you just never know. Never Am know. I right? And so, so we're in that season. I, and, and I want to remind our members, those who are present, I want to remind you that we're still in COVID season. And we don't want any of you to ignore the protocols that we've had. So what were those protocols that we established? Number one, the row that says reserve, that's where you sit. Okay? The rows that says reserve, that's where you sit. And we indicated that no more than four should be on any row. Okay? And if you're a family like the McGill family back there, there's four of them. That's the whole family. Yeah, that's your row. Okay? <laughs> that's your row. Amen. Okay, and so, uh, and if you're not speaking, you're not singing, wear your mask. Okay, why is that? Because this new virus, the Omicron virus, is more contagious than the Delta. Yeah. Now, I'm just telling you what the scientists say. The scientists say it's more contagious. If, you, if you've been vaccinated and you've had your booster shot, uh, um, the, the, the chances are, the odds are that, that if you get COVID, uh, you, you'll have mild symptoms, okay? Uh, the people who are filling the hospitals these days, generally speaking, are the ones who have not been vaccinated, all right? And so, uh, and, and, and I do have a word for those who are Christians, and, and I asked this question the other day, and so I'm going to give you the answer. Here's the question. Can you leave here before you're supposed to leave here? Yeah. Yep. All right. I want to tell you, you can go home early. Yeah. yeah. It's called an early dismissal. Early dismissal. All right. You can go home early. It's called an early dismissal. Okay. You can go home early. All right, so, and, and, but the good news is you have a home, yeah. but you can go home early. <coughs> and, I, and that reminds me, one year, my mother reminded me of this, and I'm going to turn it to the announcement. That's what I said. I was a kid, and, and I had a habit of arriving close to the time it was to get to school, Brother McWhorters. And so on occasion, I would arrive late to school. But on this particular, now I'm in elementary school. I learned early, Lily. On this particular day, I was extremely late. And I decided, along with my brother and a few other friends, that we weren't going to go to school that day. We were going to go to the park across the street from the school. And we played in the park as long as we could pay, uh, play, Sister Eartha. And none of us could tell time. We were young. And so we decided it's time to go home. My mother was shocked and surprised that her two boys was home at an extremely early time. Now, we had, we had played hooky, Pat. And why are you so home early? And I had to come up with an excuse. I said it was early dismissal day. <laughs> My mom looked outside and, and said, where are the other kids? And when she didn't see anybody, she put two and two together and drew the conclusion that we were playing hooky. 
Why, why am I saying that? Because sometimes we play hooky. I'm going to tell y'all, don't play hooky from church. Amen. Uh, don't tell God you had an early dismissal today. All right, Brother Rafi, are we ready for the announcements? So, Brother Tim and Sister Lee, take two. All right. Hello and good morning, my BWBC brothers and sisters. I'm Minister Tim White, and sitting with me is Lanita Johnson, and today is our second shot at doing our church announcements on the video, and we're so glad. We had a great time last time, didn't you think? We did. All right, so we're going to start off with our weekly announcements. January 9th, Lanita, what do we have going for Monday? Good morning, everyone, and we are so glad you are here, and we are so glad that we're back. Monday, 7 p.m., Kingdom Men will meet via Zoom. Also at 7 p.m., the women's ministry, Woven, Women of Virtue Embracing Newness, will meet. This is their first meeting of the month, so it is meeting time and Bible study time with Lady V. You don't want to miss that. And on Tuesday, <clears throat> second and fourth Tuesdays, Marriage Takes Three, and that's on Zoom. If you are married, we'd love for you to join. If you're engaged to be married, it's a great place to learn things about the dynamics of marriage and some of the ups and downs and things that you can learn. It's a great ministry, and we'd love to see you there. Thank you for coming. Thank you in advance for being there. And on Tuesday, 7 p.m., don't forget, Sanctuary Choir Rehearsal with Minister Derek Collins and, of course, Jace and Kevon. Come on. If you want to sing, if you're already singing, we would love to have you. All right, well, what do we have for Wednesdays now? Wednesday kicks off with our noonday Bible study, 12 noon in mm -hmm. person. So we will meet, we are studying the book of Genesis. This is a year-long study of the first five books of the Bible. And that is known as the Torah. The Torah. <laughs> like Midweek evening Bible study via Zoom in the comfort of your home. And uh, you can use your devices, of course. We're studying the book of Hebrews as we explore Christ in a better way. And, and don't forget, don't forget the youth meet also on Wednesday, 7 p.m. with Reverend Sutton and Sister Tia. All right, we don't have anything for Thursday and Friday, so why don't we just skip on to Sunday? Because we don't have a Saturday announcement nope, either. No, not okay. this month. Right. So let's jump into Sunday. Sunday, we have two worship opportunities for you, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Sunday school is sandwiched in between that at 945. Hmm. So don't miss it. No registration is required. You may show up and attend church service in person. Mid-morning worship service, we talked about that, I think. Both are offered in person and via Zoom. First Sunday's unity service, we did that last week. So you have to wait until next month to get a first Sunday unity service. God loves it when we all dwell together in unity, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes. <laughs> all right, BWBC church announcements. These are special announcements or some other things. So what's happening at BWBC this week? Tim, I just have a couple of things for this week. January right. 15th, 10 a.m., Deacons Ministry Training in the Sanctuary. Also, from our church administrator, Sister Dunning would like each ministry to please submit your ministry leader for 2022, no later than January 21st. January 29th at 10 a.m. is our BWBC leadership team training and meeting in the sanctuary. You know, we didn't mention birthdays for January. You mentioned uh, oh, January yeah. 21st. My brother celebrates the birthday January 21st. Unfortunately, he's in California, but happy birthday to all happy the January birthday, birthdays. Happy birthday, everyone. All right. Uh, Minister leaders, just one last thing. Mm -hmm. If you would like your announcement included in this segment, please send it to us via the website or via email to Sister Dunnan each week by noon on Tuesday. We would love to include you. You know what I call Sister Dunning? What? Dun, da, da, dun, dun, dunning. <laughs> and then I'll say. <laughs> okay, to connect with BWBC, don't forget to go to our website. That's bwbcirving.com. You'll find out more about our church, our pastor, our ministries. You can give and find all about some other announcements that we may not mention here. You can find us also on YouTube at BWBC Irving. Yes. Don't forget to subscribe. That's right. I'll put the big subscribe word on the screen like right now. That. Uh, find us on Facebook live at BWBC. And our theme for this year, we are so excited about it. 
Lanita, would you do us the honors and tell us what yes, our theme is? Yes, Pastor has reminded us to ramp it up in 2022. And that's hashtag ramp it up 2022. These have been our church announcements. So glad you're here to listen. And uh, thank you so much for giving us your undivided attention. Govern yourselves accordingly. <laughs> Please. Amen. Um, we were asked to do the song selection this morning, and just just pray for us. We're trying to. We haven't done this in 20 years plus, so pray for the brother and the sister. All right. of my joy all that's good and perfect comes from you yeah, yeah. you're the heart of my contentment hope for all I do You're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. When I'm far in light, when nights are long and cold. of my joy all that's good and perfect comes from you you're the heart of my contentment hope for all I do You're the center of my joy. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music and the meadows and the streets. Yeah, yeah. Voices of my children, my family, and my home. You're the source and finish of my highest dreams. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy all that's good and perfect comes from you you're the heart of my contentment hope for all I do Jesus The center of my joy, Jesus.
Jesus. You are the center of my joy. Oh, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. says, oh, taste and see Thank you, God. that the Lord is good. Thank you, God. He is the center of our joy. Don't forget that, amen. Thank you, God. Remember, he is at the heart of our joy. Amen. To Sam and Sonia, thank you for reminding thank us. You. Thank you. That it's all about Jesus. And he is the center of our joy. Amen. He's our anchor. Amen. He's our hope. Yeah. And days gone by and our hope and days to come. Well, we want to thank you all for being here this morning and for those who are watching online and I have to remind myself that things have changed dramatically since 2020 in March when COVID-19 hit and I didn't even know what COVID-19 was. It hit suddenly and it shifted things on the earth and it caused behaviors to change, and it caused practices to change, and it caused people to uh, reassess where they were and what was important. And some people, in their reassessing of things, uh, they discovered that they needed to be a part of what's called the Great Resignation. Yeah. Uh, they decided that they would abandon their jobs because they discovered that the, the road they were traveling, although it, it, it produced income, it did not produce happiness. So for some, it led them to say, I'm going to venture into some areas that I had been wanting to try before, and, uh, and it led them to do that. For others, it created opportunities. It created uh, new ways of shopping. Now, now you can have your groceries delivered to you uh, for a fee. Amen. And so... Uh, I had heard of Amazon, but my wife took it to a whole new level uh, during the pandemic. She took it to a whole new level. Uh, I, I would get notifications on my phone that, that Amazon was, had shipped what was ever they were going to ship. It was coming. So I learned to anticipate the arrival of whatever it was that Sister Sneed thought was vitally important for our existence. 
Amen. I learned that. Amen. I don't even question it anymore. You know, where are you going to shop? I'm shopping on Amazon. Amen. Okay. So things changed and opportunities arose. And there's a scripture in Luke chapter 19. And I just want to read a few verses to kind of paint the picture. Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse number 37. 37. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. All the mind, for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Tell them to be quiet. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Here it is. Because you did not know the time of your visitation. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you will enlighten us, inform us, inspire us, and guide us. May your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. All for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to ask a question this morning. Can you see what I see? Can you see what I see? Now, this particular text centers on what is called the triumphant entry of Jesus. Sister Jackson, Brother Jackson, this was the uh, appointed time, the predicted time, according to Daniel uh, chapter 9, that the Messiah would come. And he would come riding on a donkey or a colt. And, and so as he arrives into Jerusalem, Brother McWhorters, the, the crowd had taken out the palm trees and they had laid them on the ground and they had declared Hosanna in the highest and they had declared Jesus to be the king that was to come in the name of the Lord and they declared that there would be peace in heaven and glory in the highest and so there was a crowd in Jerusalem because it was near Passover time and it was the time it was one of the Three times that if you were a male, you were to go to the holy city of Jerusalem. So it was a, it was an, it was a, a, an anticipated time. It was a, it was an expected time. It was a crowded time. It was an appointed time. But those who were who should have expected to see what was happening could not see what was really going on. In other words, can you see what I see? And so, uh, and so as the crowd is acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah, the Pharisees are saying to Jesus, tell the people to be quiet and not to uh, recognize or to say what they are saying. And Jesus let, 
Jesus put them on blast and said, if they don't acknowledge who I am, uh, the rocks will cry out. In other words, if they don't praise me, the rocks will praise me. And isn't it something that that uh, we should have praise of God, but, but sometimes we are silent. We should acknowledge his goodness and his mercy, and yet we sit silent. We should acknowledge, even in the face of opposition, we should say, we don't care what you think about us. We're going to praise the name of the Lord. No pandemic should ever stop you from praising God. No restrictions should ever stop you from praising God. That should never be a limitation or, or restriction on, on, on your praise of God. You can get your praise on every day of the week. Am I, am I telling the truth? You can get your praise on as you're driving down the highway. You can get your praise on in the bathroom as you get dressed. You can get your praise on in the backyard when you're getting a breath of fresh air. Nothing should ever stop you from lifting up the name of Jesus. Because the truth of the matter, Brother Miles, it is about Jesus. It has always been about Jesus. It is about Jesus, and it shall be about Jesus long after we are gone. So they said to Jesus, rebuke them. They'll listen to you, Jesus. So Jesus declared that if they were to keep silent, the stones will cry out. And I'm going to tell you, there is something terrible that can happen when you keep silent. Now, Jesus neared the city of Jerusalem, looked over the city, and the Bible records this is the second time he wept. He wept over the grave of Lazarus, and now he's weeping over the city of Jerusalem. Why did he weep? Because his city, where the temple is, where God's name is to be placed, and where God is to be worshipped, he is declaring that, that it's time to cry. And you know that Bible says there's a time to rejoice, but there also is a what? A time to weep. And so Jesus knew that, that even though uh, this was a great time, he also knew that because they did not recognize the season, he wept. In other words, there was a missed opportunity. And Jesus said, not one stone. And this was a temple that had taken over 50 years to build. King Herod had uh, entered a great building program, and he decided that he would, he would rebuild the temple to, to the former glory uh, near what was Solomon's temple. And, and so he did a great job of rebuilding the temple, and, and everybody was happy and, and rejoicing, and look what we built. And Michael, he said this. He said, he said, not one stone that is in this temple is going to be standing. And Jesus predicted this around A.D. 30, A.D. 33, and just a few decades later, in A.D. 70, the words of Jesus came to pass. The Romans surrounded Jerusalem encamped around it, and, and, and because they were in rebellion, they destroyed the temple, and not one stone was remaining. But here's the real tragedy of what took place. Jesus said it happened because they did not recognize the time of their visitation. In other words, Jesus was saying, if you had been spiritually alert, if you had had your spiritual antennas up. Now, some of y'all are just as old as I am, so you know what an antenna is on the TV, am I right? And you know that if you want to watch a certain channel, you had to turn those rabbit ears a certain way to get, to get the channel on. And, and, and some of y'all were so, so uh, 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 
crafty at it, you learned that you had to put uh, aluminum foil on top of the antenna to, to really get it to tune in to the channel that you wanted to tune in. And, 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 and so if you wanted to watch your station, you also knew that you had to have some pliers with you. Am I right? Because when the knob broke off, you didn't want to be stuck on one channel, so you had to get you some pliers. And when it came time to turn, you were the automatic remote. You, you got those pliers and you turned it whatever channel you wanted on because you realized yeah. it was important. You realized the time was essential. Can I say this? Jesus said, y'all are spiritual. But you don't recognize your time or your visit. If you had recognized who was here, you would have seized the opportunity. So here's the thing I'm going to say to you. Number one, missed opportunity can happen. I'm going to say it again. Missed opportunity can happen. After all of those centuries... After all of the religious teaching and studying about the coming Messiah, when he came, they did not recognize him as the Messiah. The scripture said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. They, they should have known that he was the Messiah, but they did not recognize. The question that is on the table is, why didn't they recognize him as the Messiah? Can I give you a scripture? Romans chapter 10 and, and it tells us that they had a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. In other words, you can be religious and still be blind. You can't, if, if you are religious, but not in a right relationship with God, you won't see what you are to see. So when Jesus came, after all the signs and all the breadcrumbs, all the scriptures that pointed to this is going to be the Messiah. When he came, they did not recognize him. They were religious, but they were not right with God. In other words, they were not spiritually discerned. And can I suggest this? Missed opportunities come all the time. I, I, I watch sports and I love sports and I've seen people who... who uh, they're carrying the ball, getting ready to score a touchdown, and they're celebrating on their way to the goal line. And prematurely, they'll drop the ball on the ground before they cross the finish line, and somebody else on the other team will pick it up. So what should have been a touchdown became a turnover. That was a classic example one time in a, in, a in a basketball contest. One of the greatest basketball players of all time, Larry Bird, as the seconds were winding down on the clock, he took a three-point shot to win the game. But all of a sudden, the referees uh, called off the shot. And the reason why they called off the shot was because the coach of the team that Larry Bird was on had called a timeout. Larry Bird was not happy because it was a missed opportunity to win the game. And sometimes Christians prematurely believe that they have it all mapped out. So let me tell you what I have learned. So just listen very carefully. Is there anybody who's watching online and anybody who's in the room? Have you ever put together a puzzle? Raise your hand if you put together a puzzle. Okay. Now, uh, that's most of you. Now, when you were just getting in the business of putting together puzzles, you started with big old chunk pieces of puzzles. Am I right? And, and it may have been five or six, eight or ten, and, and, and you were able to put them together rather easily. You saw the picture on the box. You saw the pieces of the puzzle, and you learned real quickly that because of the shape of the puzzle in the box, it was, it was really easy to figure it out. But then you graduated. You wanted a, a more challenge. So now you got a 100-piece puzzle. 
And you look at the box and you discover that it was more challenging to put together a 100-piece puzzle than it was to put together a 10-piece puzzle. But one of the things you learn is that in order for you to be able to put the puzzle together, you had to, you had to start with the frame. Am I, am I telling the truth? Because if you didn't put the framework together, everything else would not make sense. Can I suggest you this? If you really want to know what's going on, you need, to, you need to figure out the framework of what is in God's word so that you can figure out how it is supposed to look. You got to work around the edges. You got you to gotta figure it out. And sometimes we get, we get bogged down in the, in the little stuff. So rule number one is recognize the time of your visitation. Be right with God. I'm talking about a relationship, but the other thing that is important, if you are going to figure it out, can I tell you, you need to stay focused. You need to stay focused. You can't get distracted by other people. You can't allow what's going on to cause you to lose sight of what is utterly most important. And so in 2022, just as it was in the days of Jesus, you got to stay focused. So let me tell you what the Pharisees did. Instead of acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah, they decided they wanted to trip Jesus up. In other words, they wanted to find a mistake that he made so they can seize the opportunity because they really didn't want to give up power. And can I suggest to you that being a Christian is not about being, uh, being in power. Am I telling the truth? You need to recognize that this world is not your home. You need to recognize that uh, if you are grinding to try to put some coins in your pocket and you lose sight of the thing that is most important in the end, it really won't matter. So what were some of the things that they did to try to trick Jesus up? Jesus said in, in chapter 20, Look at chapter 20, verse 20. Jesus said, so they watched him, and they sent spies who pretended to be righteous that they might seize on his words in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the government. In other words, they were watching Jesus. They were watching him to trip up. And you know there are people watching you, looking at you. Want to want to see you what trip up? They want to see you make a mistake. They want to they want to seize on the opportunity, Raphael, for you to stumble. And so they sent spies, Deacon Gerald, to catch Jesus in his own words. And so they they said, Jesus, we know. Now, you are a teacher, and we know that you teach right. We know that you don't show no personal favoritism. I'm, I'm preaching the Bible right now. We know that you don't play around. We know that you tell it like it is. We know that you don't have any pets. You don't have any, any teacher's pets. You don't have any favorites. We know that you tell the truth. So I got a question for you, Master, because you teach the way of God in truth. So here's the question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? You ever seen people who, who ask questions not because they want to get an answer, but they just want to trip you up? So you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, give me a coin. Who's, whose inscription is it on the coin? And they said, Caesar. And so Jesus said, give Caesar what is his and give God what is his. And because they weren't prepared for the answer, the Bible says they went away stumped. They went away silent. You ever seen people who can't understand why you can praise God in the midst of a storm? 
because you recognize that this world is not your home. And I want to suggest that in 2022, the church is going to have to not keep silent, but the church is going to have to speak up. And can I suggest, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you and you and you and you and you and you. I'm talking about you. We're going to have to stand up and tell the truth. Do we really believe that Jesus is the Christ, the way to peace? Do we really believe that? And, and, and if there's a storm going on in the world, whether, it, whether it's COVID or whether there's a storm going on in our world, do we have enough faith to be able to ride the storms out? Do we have enough faith to believe that if Jesus is on board in our lives, any storm that comes up, he'll allow us to conquer that storm? Do we have the faith to believe it? Because you don't know what's going to happen the rest of the year. Well, I can remember in one short period of time, I lost my dad, I lost my stepdad, and I lost a friend. My wife and I lost a friend that was just like a sister. Her daughter and her died on Mother's Day weekend. And it was like I had all the wind knocked out of me. I could not catch my breath. And can you imagine when you're going through tragedies and you lose a loved one and right after you lose that one, another one is lost. And then you look right and then you're still trying to, trying to catch your equilibrium and then right along somebody else comes and the question is how are you going to take all those blows and so I'm asking the question can you see what I see we open up this service with a song Life is filled with swift transition. Put your what? Hope in Jesus. Is that it? See, I know there are some people in this room you're going through some stuff right now. There are some people who are watching online. It's hard to even lift your head up because of the pain that you've encountered. And I want you all to look with your spiritual eyes. Look beyond what you see. So that you can see what you don't see. And what you don't see is just as important, is more important than what you see. And behind the things that you can see with your physical eyes, there is a father who loves you. And who's able to protect you and guide you and comfort you to be able to go through whatever you're going through. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, God will not put on you any more than you can bear. So you need to know that whatever you are going through, God will be there with you to make sure that you get through. As a matter of fact, he said to Paul, and Paul had three times asked God, God, remove this thing from me. And God told him no, and God told him no, and God said to him, my grace Grace is sufficient for you. In other words, I have more grace than to get you through whatever you're getting through. Whoever said that the, that the flight was going to be smooth? 
But can I suggest you, even though the flight might not be smooth, it'll get you where you need to go. If Jesus is the pilot of your life, I'm asking the question, is he your pilot? Is he in the cockpit leading your life? If, he, if, he's, if he's the pilot that's flying the plane that you're on, can I suggest you relax? You're going to get there. It's going to be all right. There was a man, I need to stop. There was a man named Job who was a righteous man. A man. And in a short period of time, he lost all his possessions, Chester. Then he got word that all ten of his kids were gone. He got word the devastation that had hit him in such a short period of time literally knocked the wind out of him and, 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 he, and he even caused his wife to come up with a, with a suggestion that even, even Job and all of his sorrow said, you talk like a foolish woman. Because what she suggested was to end your pain, why don't you just curse God and die? But Job said, but Lord, give it. And the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He had some friends. That really wasn't the kind of friends you want around in a time of sorrow. So they came around Job and said, Job, what you do? Tell us. You must have done something, Job, to cause all this calamity to come in your house. What did you do, Job? You get to the last part of the book. When Job started to talk, and then God said, Job, where were you? Where were you, Job? In other words, Job, you don't understand how everything uh, going out. Where were you, Job? And Job, Job said, I need to shut up, Lord. I've already spoken prematurely. I need to keep my mouth closed. God said, speak up, Job. But listen to this. If you read the last part of the book of Job, everything that Job lost came back to him. I want to suggest when you take out a sheet of paper, a blank sheet of paper, fold it up in half. Fold it up in half. And on one side of the paper, write down all the good things that has happened in your life. And on the other side, write down all the not so good things that have happened in your life. If you're a child of God, can I suggest, because I already know what it's going to say. My good days. I weigh my bad days. <laughs> when I look at the ledger and I add it all up, my good days, I weigh my bad days. And because they I weigh my bad days, I won't complain. Is there anybody in the room who's taken the time to add it all up? And when you add it all up, God has been good to me. God has been good to you. He's better than good. I said he's better than good. That's good, Pastor. That's good. It only takes one thing on the positive side to outweigh all the negative. You know what that name is? Jesus. 
So, Brother Miles, I'm going to thank him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to magnify his name. Sister David, I'm going to praise him. The psalmist said, David, in Psalms 37, Sister Diane Taylor, I once was young, but now I got gray hairs. I once had a fro, but now I have a no fro. I once was fine, but now I'm not. I once was young, but now I'm old. I know there's somebody who can testify to that. I once was young, but now I'm old. Come on now. I know there's somebody in the room who can testify. I once was young, but now I'm old. Come on now. I know there's somebody. Look at your hands. I once was young, but now I'm old. Look at your hair on your head. I once was young, but now I'm old. Walk around. Look at your glasses. I once was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen God turn his back on the righteous. I've never seen God say no to the righteous. Nor have I seen his seed <laughs> begging bread. Somebody ought to testify. Somebody ought to be able to say, God's been good to me. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. I know there are some people that can testify to that. God has been better to me than I've been to myself. So for those who are younger, can I advise you? My wife and I went out to, we went to a lawyer this week and decided that we were going to uh, update our will. Now there's a reason why we did that, because we once were young, <laughs> but now we're old. Yeah. See, when you realize that you got more days be uh, behind you than you got in front of you, you start making preparations for your eventual departure. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. So, can you see what I see? Can you hear? what I hear if the Lord were to call your name today would you be ready to go would you be ready to go and if he were to call you today would he catch you with your work undone. See, that, so there are some realities that I do know. It is appointed to man to die once and after that judgment. Another thing I know is you don't have to be old to die. Or you can die young. The other thing is you don't have to get an advance notice. It's your time. It can just happen just like that. So you don't have to be getting ready. You have to already what? Be ready. So why do we have an invitation time? Why do we open up a door of a church and say, if there's anybody in here who not saved or you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, why do we say, come? The reason why we say come is because the Lord says come. He says, come to me all who labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. That's the word, God. That's the word. Yeah. He says, if you hear my voice today, harden not your heart. 
Can I suggest this to you? You can't try to get right with God. You need to just come as you are. Don't try to figure it out. Just come. So we open up the door of the church to allow people to come because Jesus said come. And you don't have to come uh, uh, any certain way. Just come. So right where you are, if you feel like God is calling you to, to come to Jesus or calling you to be a part of this fellowship of believers, just come. If you're watching online and you say, I can't come because I'm in Arlington. I can't come because I'm, I'm right now I'm in Grand Prairie. I can't come because I'm in Mansfield. Pick up a phone and tomorrow call the church and say, I heard the pastor preach and I want to come right now. Amen. And we'll give you a call. But if you're here right now, don't stay seated. Don't be like the one who told Jesus, tell the rocks, tell, tell the people, tell the crowd to be still. Come. If you knew the time of your visitation, if you knew that it was your last time getting the invitation from Jesus, if you knew that tomorrow would not come for you and the day was your last day on planet earth, would you be ready? So, I'm going to pray a prayer. And even while I'm praying, you can come. You can come to become a Christian. You can come as a Christian. You can come to rededicate your life to Christ. I'm going to pray. While I'm praying, you just come. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the word that was declared today in Luke chapter 19. How Jesus came at the appointed time in the appointed way and was not recognized by the masses. And so you cried. And you said, Father, if they had known the day of visitation and the way of peace, but they did not see it. So I'm praying, Father God, that our eyes, our spiritual eyes be opened so that we can really see what's going on. And so if there be any here, Father, who is watching online or even in the sanctuary and they feel a conviction by the Holy Spirit to come, I pray that they'll come and then we'll be able to answer whatever questions they may have, whether it be a prayer request, whether it be a, a membership request, whether it be a dedication request, whatever reason they come, Father, I pray that we will receive them in the same spirit in which Christ told us to receive them. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, nobody came while I was praying. That means you may want to come after I'm through praying. But we're going to stand now. So when you, when you go home and you get your blank sheet of paper, just fold it in half. And put the pros on one side and the cons on the other. And I can guarantee you, you're going to have more good things to say Amen. than bad things. Amen? Amen? Now we're going to prepare to give our tithes and our offerings to the church. You can give that on your way out. There's a basket. There's a tithe box. You can give on your way out. And we're going to ask you to keep, keep those families in prayer that we mentioned, those of those who are part of uh, Ben Washington, and, and, and there are some others whose names I did not call, but between now and 11 o'clock, we're going to pray for them. So let's, let's pray for the offering, then we'll leave. Father God, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to give, to give for the advancement of the kingdom. So we bring our tithes and our offerings, Father, in obedience to you and to your word. So we pray, Father God, that you will bless the gifts, as well as the givers. We pray, Father God, that we will receive your word, which says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So, Father God, let the gifts that are given 
be used to be able to share the good news with those who are lost. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Repeat after me. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne. To the only wise God and be power, be glory, majesty, and dominion. And everybody who loved the Lord said amen, amen, amen. You are excused. Thank you for listening to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online Sunday service. We pray that you have been blessed.